We've got a lineage switch of going from myeloid derived suppressor cells to some of these more active dendritic or natural killer cells. Here, look at this orange right here versus here, and you get about 40, 50% of natural killer cell increases. And we also see in the BALB-C model, here's the dendritic cells and here are the natural killer cells with the endocyanin green calcium phosphate nanoparticles. And I'm just gonna end on this slide because this is where we're really going to take this. Everybody's talking about adoptive transfer. Can you actually do what we just saw in vivo? Can we do it in, vit in vitro? Can I take breast cancer cells from the patient, put them into a cell culture dish, give them the calcium phosphate nanoparticles, then give them the near infrared light, take those cells back into the mouse model and kill the RA formed tumor? And you can see we're starting to see some effects. Here's the MDA cells in culture. They get treated with the calcium phosphate nanoparticles and near infrared light. They go back in the animal, and the formed tumor reduces 40%. And in data, we really don't have time today because I timed this on the airplane. And that's where we get into the lipids. We saw a specific lipid that is causing this. It's called dihydrosphincanine 1-phosphate. And if you want to see the slides, we can actually get adopt the transfer down to about 80, 90%. So basically, oxygen is important, but what oxygen does is it changes the way lipids are metabolized. You start forming some of these immunoactive lipids, dihydrosphincanine 1-phosphate, and you turn on the immune system, and you get a lineage switch from myeloid cells to more active lymphoid cells, and you can kill the tumor from the outside. So with that, nanotechnology has the potential to deliver the promise of light-based ther <coughs> therapies, not only imaging, but eventually therapy using light. With that, Brian Barth is my senior postdoc who's leading this project. This is his team. James Adair is co-founder of Keystone Nano, which is helping us commercialize the technology. Here are some of the people in his lab, as well as Peter Eklund and Peter Butler, our card-carrying photophysicists, who basically do all the fluorescence correlation spectroscopy. The leukemia data is done by Tom Lochran, who's director of our Penn State Cancer Cancer Institute, and Dr. Smith and Dr. Liu, who work for um, Dr. Lochran. And again, I want to acknowledge that I'm co-founder of Keystone Nano, and the conflict is that Penn State technology is being developed by Keystone Nano. With that, I'm open to questions. <laughs>